In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you all. And with you, Spirit. Well, once again, welcome to our celebration of these sacred mysteries. Uh, thank you for uh, joining us for the uh, technological marvels uh, of the day. To prepare ourselves to celebrate worthily, let us call to mind our sin and ask for forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And so we say, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, and we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so we pray. As we enter into prayer, let us remember in a special way. Leah Cressy, Giuseppe and Rosario Bruno, Serafina Rufo, Domenica Fiorente, Kathleen Corco, Jean Ferrin, Alvaro Sintich, Maria Corazon, and Queen. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Job. Job spoke to his friends. Does not the human being have a hard service on earth? And are not their days like the days of a laborer? like a slave who longs for the shadow, like a laborer who looks for their wages. So I have a lot of months of emptiness, and nights of misery are a portion to me. When I lie down, I say, when shall I rise? But the night is long, and I am full of tossing until dawn. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle, and come to their end without hope. Remember that my life is a breath. My eye will never again see good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sing praises to the Lord who heals the brokenhearted. Sing praises to the Lord who heals the brokenhearted. How good it is to sing praises to our God. For he is gracious and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. The Lord heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of stars and gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord, abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord has left the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing praises to the Lord who heals the brokenhearted. Reading from the first letter. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me, and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I am trusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Justice that in my proclamation I may make the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I might win more of them. To the weak I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some, I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessings. 
The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. As soon as Jesus and his disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told Jesus about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to Jesus all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door, and he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the deacons to, demons to speak, because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, Jesus got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came to do. And Jesus went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> A couple of weeks ago, Father Keith mentioned that the Gospel of Mark is the shortest of the Gospels, and indeed it is. And in fact, the Gospels of Luke and the Gospels of Matthew rely heavily upon the Gospel of Mark. And what they've often done is taken a Markan story and expanded it. It's a bit like if you remember way back in the 60s, uh, you, you want, if you watch television out of Buffalo, and there was Irv Weinstein, and Irv Weinstein used to say at 7 o'clock, or early in the evening, firing on the wonder, full news at 11. And so what would happen, he would get the message out, but at 11 o'clock there would be a more detailed description of uh, what happened at that firing on the wonder, or wherever it was in Buffalo. And in a way that's what Mark Gospel is like. Mark gives you the basic facts, and then with, later on we find with Luke and with uh, Matthew, that they expand upon that fact that, that, that uh, Mark had made and make it their own story and so it becomes uh, more colourful as we say but Mark of course sticks to the facts, sticks to the basics. And the, in Mark's Gospel, the first eight chapters, he lays out Jesus is God in the first eight chapters of Mark's Gospel and he does this by a series of miracles. And then, when this is one of the early miracles, is the curing of uh, Simon, the, Simon Peter's mother in law, where he, she's cured of fever. But then he, he goes on and he casts out demons. And the demons know him, but he casts them out. And then he cures the man who has leprosy. So here we have already a, a sort of escalation of the type of mi uh, miracles that Jesus is doing. A simple uh, laying on of hands of the mother in law casting out the demon, and then touching somebody who's a leper, and curing someone which is, at that time, is, was incurable. Incurable right until the modern ages. So we have Jesus doing that, those three miracles. And then he goes on. Later on we find him then in Mark's Gospel, that the, uh, they cast out into the sea, or on the Sea of Galilee, a terrific storm arises, and the call upon Jesus, we're sinking. And Jesus gets up and he calms the storm. And so we start seeing Jesus being exhibited not only as a curer, not only as a faith healer, but somebody who has power over of the winds and the seas and the, uh, and the elements. You know, so it's a throwback in a way to the first, uh, the opening of uh, uh, Genesis, where Adam and Eve are there, and God creates the world. So we see Jesus having control of the elements. And then finally, there's a gospel, and then there is a gospel narrative towards the end of the eighth chapter, where he raises the daughter of Jairus from the dead. So if we look at those miracles, we can see a progression of Jesus doing miracles which are even greater. And they all point to his Godhead, to his divinity. I mean, nobody can raise somebody from the dead unless they're divine. Similarly, nobody can control the winds and the seas unless they're divine. 
Nobody can cast out the spirits of evil unless they're divine. And so we see Jesus proclaiming himself in those first few chapters of Mark's Gospel as to who he is. That his, his role is not only as a man, but he is divine. And then following it from chapter 8 onwards in Mark's Gospel, he then works with his disciples, he works with his apostles to show them not only who he is, but what's to be expected of them in the time to come. And so we're coming up in a couple of weeks, we're coming up to Lent, and it would be a useful exercise is to take Mark's Gospel, it's not a long gospel, uh, we'll take a chapter a day and just work through it um, as we uh, approach the end of these, uh, as we approach the, uh, the um, uh, crucifixion and death of Jesus at the end of the, uh, the Lent period. But Mark's Gospel would be a useful uh, spiritual reading to have during our months, or uh, during six weeks of uh, Lent. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So we offer a prayer, we offer firstly for our church and our uh, hope and bishops and uh, all who minister within the church that they may be open to the Spirit of God, they may be open to the uh, example of Christ and uh, reaching out to those who are tormented, who are troubled, and uh, uh, reaching out with them, to them uh, with compassion, with love even with patience. For this, we pray to the Lord. Oh, dear. Let us remember uh, the sick of our parish, uh, parishes, Clifton Lapp, Amanda Mobilia, Brian Finnamore, Angelo, Angela Caruso, Anne Gordon Walker, Joe Wisniewski, Beverly Quest, Stephen Tryon, Olivero Amata, Joan McGrogan, let us also remember Joseph Toy Pham and Teresa Ki Pham and Teresa Din Ti Liu. Uh, may God be with them in this journey of their life. For this we pray to the Lord. Oh, dear our prayer. Almighty God, we offer you our prayer of faith and hope and trust. Most especially we offer our prayer in the name of Jesus. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, from all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, bread of life chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, and all who serve you. Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Apostles, and all of the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. O the kingdom of God and the glory of your forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And so, my friends, the peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Now let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. The one who am not worthy to enter in the mind of him, but those who say the word of my soul shall be healed.
again. Uh, thank you very much for uh, joining in this celebration of these sacred mysteries. I know it's not the ideal way to uh, celebrate our faith, but uh, it is uh, definitely uh, a valid one given all the circumstances that we're uh, facing. Uh, within the next uh, week or two, we will hear more uh, advice from the uh, health authorities and from the government about whether or not uh, we can uh, once again uh, slowly start to reopen in society, uh, including the church. Uh, but until then, uh, stay home, wash your hands, wear a mask, be safe, better safe than sorry. Let us pray. O God, who have will that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live, that, made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you, Spirit. Again, thank you very much for being uh, here with uh, us uh, today. May Almighty God continue to bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Christ. And have a safe weekend. <laughs>